The BBC and its creators put too much thought into their opening sequence, in which a Tyrannosaurus leads his clutch to an offshore island to feast on large marine turtles, and in which one of those clutch gets eaten by a Mosasaur. And I say this because Tyrannosaurus rex comes from the river facies of the Hell Creek Formation, meaning it mostly would have lived alongside those rivers and also oxbow lakes and floodplains, rather than being at the beach. That said, Tyrannosaurus rex was a large animal and presumably could have been there. We just don't have direct evidence of that right now. A new paper, though, provides what is new evidence of mosasaurs in the rivers of the Hell Creek Formation, and that is based on a new tooth described by a team led by Melanie During. Dr. During did her PhD studying fresh versus saltwater isotopes in fish from the Hell Creek Formation. So she's super, super well suited to this task and understanding whether or not this tooth was actually from freshwater or from saltwater that had been washed in during high tide. Now it is important to note that some parts of the Hell Creek Formation do have minor marine influence, which basically just means the obvious question is, well, isn't this tooth just from part of that marine section? And there's a few different tests done here, mostly with different teeth. And these teeth come from a few quarries in southern North Dakota. And the Mosasaur tooth in question that we're interested in comes from the quarry L4327, found here in section 18 of Morton County. For comparison, they also used fossils attributable to Mosasaurus decayi from L148 down here, and from some species of Pyoplatycarpus from L142. Both of these sites are from the underlying Fox Hills Formation, which basically records the retreat of the Western Interior Seaway. They are very much marine. And looking at the latest Cretaceous, you can see where this seaway retreated, from cutting North America entirely in half to becoming basically just a very large embayment into what would become many of the Great Plains states instead. Now, being from a higher level, that does mean that L4327 is younger. So why would it be more inland if the ocean is retreating? Now, there's a number of options. Maybe this is part of the Hell Creek Formation that does just have that minor marine influence. Maybe there is just a slight change in ocean level locally. Maybe a hot spot underneath the crust lifted part of it and pushed water onto this area. There's all kinds of possibilities. But there's also evidence that it wasn't marine. Namely, it was found directly next to the tooth from a Tyrannosaurus rex. Now maybe that Tyrannosaurus tooth did just get washed into the ocean and deposited in the same place. However, neither really has a whole lot of wear that suggests it was transported for a long distance. So that really doesn't prove anything just yet. Enter stable isotopes. Everything someone or something eats becomes its body. You are quite literally what you eat. That is to say, if you eat a fish, the elements and atoms in that fish get broken down and those atoms become things like your bones and your muscle fibers and your teeth. Relevant here. But there's a difference between freshwater fish and marine fish. They have different isotopes of certain elements in their bones. Basically, because streams are constantly moving, they face a little bit more evaporation and become more enriched in heavier isotopes of oxygen. So the water is quite literally heavier in fresh water than it is in salt water. Now, the researchers needed to basically pretend they were in an oil rush, and what did people do in an oil rush? Got a drill, baby. Drill. But in this case, the drill is actually very, very small, and by using a very small drill to powder a small part of the tooth, that powder can be collected and vaporized, and those gases measure to understand what the isotopes were in the powdered material. By doing this on the three previously mentioned Mosasaur teeth, as well as a few other fossils for consistency, it was found that the L4327 Cori Mosasaur grew its tooth while living entirely in fresh water. What this means is that, at least in this region, there was a large enough river to support large mosasaurs for a significant amount of time. There's also some other isotopic evidence that mosasaurs were moving towards freshwater. Not permanently, but kind of like modern day sea snakes do, where they occasionally just move towards these streams to rebalance their internal saltiness, and then are able to move back into the oceans more regularly. So it's just this kind of cycle that they have. Seemingly, mosasaurs did the same thing. As for why the even more extreme version of this happened here, it seems like as the western interior seaway shrank, its drainage area increased, and so relatively more and more fresh water was draining into this basin, making the seaway less and less salty compared to the open ocean. With that, the evolutionary pressure to venture more and more into freshwater likely brought benefits to at least some of the mosasaurs, 
And this tooth isn't just from a juvenile either. It's been thought that potentially juveniles and subadults were limited to more nearshore environments. But no, this tooth is larger than those from juvenile Pliopladocarpus and is actually really similar in structure to adult prognathodon teeth, which was pretty high up the trophic chain, being one of many similarly sized very large mosasaurs in the western interior of your seaway. One important thing to note with that previous mention of them going towards fresh water though, is that you can measure different parts of the tooth and check what the isotopes are at each level. And that's what those previous researchers did. And that was able to show, hey, it's in the salt water for this much time, and then about every two weeks comes back to fresh water and then goes back to the ocean. That doesn't seem to be the case here. Basically the entire tooth seems like it was developed in fresh water. The implications of this are that this mosasaur would have stayed in fresh water, or at least majority fresh water, for multiple months. And that's because based on what we do know about mosasaur tooth replacement rates, they would have hung onto their teeth for months. I mean, that tooth would have been barely starting as a little nub in fresh water and then developed into a full tooth in fresh water. All this to say, if we bring it back to prehistoric planet, they didn't need to have the T-Rex swimming to a small barrier island. The sequence could have worked just as well in the rivers of the Hell Creek Formation, although probably with a little bit less visibility, so I understand the creative vision. Please help us by helping us help you by getting you cool shirts like Bulbasaurus. It's a fossil animal named after a Pokemon. You gotta love it. All kinds of other designs too. Check out the store. Thanks, bye. <laughs> I'm clearly off of my rocker. Uh, be safe, take care, don't go extinct.